Hello and welcome to another PWN Design Studio tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to be talking about terrain definitions inside of Gaia. Back a few weeks ago during a live stream I was asked about the terrain definitions and at that time I was using a new version of Gaia and they had uh, Quad Spinner had moved the terrain definitions to a different location I did not know where it was uh, yet when I was asked. Uh, but now it's well established on where it's at um, and it used to be located in these settings here but they moved it to the build settings under terrain definitions and it makes sense to be there because everything that you do here pertains to the build of your landscape so it makes sense for it to be here I, I quite agree with the move I just should have been looking around a little bit more for it but it is down at the bottom a little bit harder to see uh, especially when it's such a tiny little drop down menu uh, underneath the the export option uh, build destination here so it can be easy to s easily missed if it was moved maybe up here under uh, the additional details or additional options before the build destination it, it might make it a little bit easier to know where things are but in any case this is where it's located and what the terrain definitions uh, consist of is the height and scale of your terrain so the height will be in meters, and by default it'll be 2,600 meters. So that'll be from your lowest elevation to your highest elevation before it starts clipping. So if you were to extend past 2,600 meters, you'll start to clip. Uh, from the scale perspective, this is going to be from uh, a width and length of your overall square here. And this won't change how large the base is in the grid here. Um, it, it will change it in the file exports, but it won't actually change it in the GUI. So when you increase the scale here, you'll notice that some de uh, terrain definitions might increase or decrease in scale depending on which way you go. In this case, if we increase it, it will decrease those definitions, uh, <laughs> definitions, uh, those details so you're getting a little more flat landscape that's to be expected because now you have a larger area you're working with but as you can see it doesn't change it in the grid view at all the scales are also real time so you can change them in real time like this and you can see if you decrease it it's going to vastly increase the details in your train as well as the height the height will do the same thing so if you decrease the height you can see what's doing here and if you increase it you can see it's increasing the height there uh, it's non-destructive so you can change it however you want and then change it back to the defaults by holding shift and clicking on the middle button here to reset to defaults and uh, you can do that whenever you want you don't you I mean it's on the fly and it's not destructive the way you get the real scale here and the height scale ratio is based on a a little formula and the formula is height divided by scale uh, I believe that's what it is I, I, I believe it's height divided by scale and then you'll get the ratio that you're looking for so if you have a very specific reason or specific purpose to have a real scale and real ratio that's how you would get it you would just take your height and divide it by scale uh, the default values inside of Gaia that you start with is going to be good for about 99.999 continuing onward with nines uh, of the projects that you do. The reason why is because you can get the same results with a lower height and lower scale or larger scale, uh, so on and so forth, if you were to just scale your landscape appropriately in whatever program you're using. So you can go ahead and make a 10,000 kilometers uh, landscape inside of Cinema 4D if you wanted, but the terrain definitions are the default. And it, you can make it look the same as long as you know how to vertically scale your landscape appropriately. Where that comes from is the range on your files that you export. Quad Spinner has a pretty good breakdown of what you should be using when you are thinking about what range that you want to use. And depending on the program you're using, uh, what you want to choose here may change. Ultimately, the best uh, vertic uh, verticality layering that you're going to get is with a 32-bit float uh, file. And the way you would get that is by using raw and then exporting it as a 32-bit file. That'll give you pretty much the most detail uh, as well as the most height layers that you can get inside of your 
terrain. The reason why is because they have about a million different layers, height layers in a 32-bit floating raw file than a 8-bit raw file, which would have about 254, I believe, 254 uh, height layers in the file. So you're, you're left with not a lot to work with. You can still get a pretty decent looking landscape with that, obviously, uh, in a smaller file size. But you're not working with everything that you could potentially be working with. Another thing is, is uh, I like to use proportional, and the reason why I like using proportional is because if you want to export a height map um, and a object like an OBJ from Gaia, using the proportional method will work relatively well for you. The reason why is because it's going to export what you see here in the viewport, uh, pretty much one for one for most cases. And if you want to export one for one as an object, proportional is what you're going to want because if you're going to be using a uh, height map for other detail work later on, you're wanting it to map to your object the way it should. So with all that said, hopefully that brings to light some things that uh, is inside of Gaia that might have been confusing to you. I know this wasn't like an in-depth build and stuff like that, but at least the information is there for you. The key takeaway from this is to know that these terrain definitions, you can set these if you want, it's not necessary. Um, and if you need to, because you need real world accurate scaling, then at least you have the option to set it. The max height you can get is 10,000 meters. And I think the reason why that is, is because there's not really a mountain on this planet that is larger than 10,000 meters. So there wasn't really a reason to go higher than that. Uh, the base can be extended a lot further but uh, you're not going to be able to get pretty much past 100,000. You might be able to increase it manually. I actually have never tried. So let's figure that out right now. There we go. No. So the, def the, the max size that you can get is about 100,000. And that's still huge. So at least you still have a lot of buffer room to play with. You can get features that are larger than what you're going to find on this planet. So if you wanted to expand your imagination, you could. But again... That doesn't really matter because you can keep these the default and it'll work pretty much for most situations. One thing that you might want to set the actual scaling terrain definitions for is if you have like DEM data, so digital elevation maps, and you want to have an actual scaling for whatever you're importing. So for example, the Lake Blanche video that I made, I actually went and took the DEM data from that and imported it into Gaia because I wanted to see how the mountain structure laid out and I wanted to see what I hiked and I was able to import it at the scale that I exported out as. I did about I believe eight kilometers uh, in width and height so the scale was set to 8,000 meters and then the height of that mountain range is somewhere around uh, 6,000, 7,000, I believe. I have to go back and look. I can't remember what I set it to. Uh, and I was able to get the actual scaling of it so I can see exactly what I hiked. And it was awesome. So that might be a good uh, work case for you. But I believe that will pretty much conclude this tutorial. There isn't a whole lot here because essentially what it is is that you can use the train definitions if you want, but it's not necessary. And if you need to have a reason to use it, at least you have it. So that's how it can be broken down. But if you have any questions regarding this or anything else that I've covered, uh, please shoot me a comment. I try to reply to my comments as often as I can, when I can, and as soon as I can. So I don't like to sit on them. So I try to stay in touch with everybody as often as I can. So don't uh, feel afraid to comment uh, and ask me questions. I'm not going to bite your head off. I like to think I'm a pretty nice dude. So uh, if, at least I hope I, I am. One more thing uh, is a quick plug for the Discord channel. I recommend joining the Discord channel because we have a lot of people who have joined now. And the more the merrier. And the more people who get in and start communicating and talking and uh, sharing ideas, uh, the better the Gaia community will be. As well as uh, there are some other things in here that you might uh, be able to take advantage of. So if you use like Cinema 4D, we have chats about Cinema 4D in here about how to do certain things. We also chat about Gaia, obviously. Same thing with Octane. Nobody's used Octane, Vue, 
well, I guess we do have some conversations in view. Um, Octane, Embergen, and Corona. Uh, we don't have a whole lot of people who use those, but if you do use those and you need some help on anything, you can discuss here. And I am active in the Discord. I reply almost every day as soon as I can, and I get pinged on everything, and I will respond uh, when I can, so I don't like to keep things just sitting around. So anyways, that's a quick plug. I will leave a link to the Discord in the video description. Go ahead and join. There's no... Uh, th there's nothing really blocking you unless you don't want to use it and that's totally fine, I guess so uh, Anyways, I will end this video and I have another few videos that I'm gonna be uploading pretty soon So hopefully you guys can check those out and I will see you guys in the next video